Hello guys, how are you all? Welcome to my channel. So, today we are gonna see, what if Bo Hancock fall in love with Naruto, part 1, subscribe if you enjoy the video, let's start the story. What would happen if Naruto was captured during his battle with Nagato, and the Akatsuki took the Kyubi out of him? What if he died, and was given a second chance in another world? What would happen if a Shinigami gave him new powers? This is a crossover between One Piece and Naruto. Naruto woke up in a strange place. He saw a campfire and two logs. There was some sitting on one of the logs. It's about time, kid. Get over here and sit down. I'm on a tight schedule here. Complained the person. Naruto sat down on the other side of the person and noticed that this person was a woman. She had long black hair that was in a ponytail and had blue eyes. She also had a white robe on and a book in her hand that she was reading over. She looked over at him. Uzumaki Naruto. If you haven't figured it out already you died fighting painter has real name Nagato. The Kyubi's power was sealed by the Akatsuki. In other words you're dead. Naruto's jaw hit the floor. What? Who are you? She sighed at him. Why can't you humans just listen to us and not ask the same questions all the time? Naruto glared at her. Fine, fine. I'm an angel. Naruto had a question mark appear above his head. She laughed. Humans. I forgot that all of you have different names for us. Does the Grim Reaper ring any bells? What's that? Questioned Naruto. Oh I see now. How about a Shinigami? He widens his eyes. You're a Shinigami. Yes I am. I prefer to be called a. Naruto cut her off, but I heard that they were ugly and had horns or something like that. Enough. I don't have time to explain everything to you. Fine. Are you going to take me to heaven? He asked. She laughed at that. You are a special case, Uzumaki Naruto. The future needs your help. Naruto raised an eyebrow at that. Future. That's right. You will be sent to another time or should I say world. The Lord decided that he needed you there rather than in the ninja world. You are confusing the hell out of me. I have to stop Akatsuki. Yelled an angry Naruto. Listen. Naruto stood up in anger. I don't care what you say. I need to save Sakura. He was cut off as she lifted him up by the throat. We are giving you another chance, boy. Are you going to listen or must I force you to listen? Naruto was in so much pain. All he could do was nod his head. Then she let him go. You're a smart kid after all. Thanks to the Akatsuki's actions. The world has become evil in the future. I will send you there myself. There will be a fishman there to explain everything to you about the world. Listen to every word he says. That fishman never lies and you can trust him. Save that world any way you like. Are you really serious about this? He questioned. She shook her head yes. I don't joke around. Everyone you knew is dead. You have to make new comrades. Naruto widens his eyes in horror. Please don't send it to me. I want to stay with my friends. It's not my decision. I was ordered to send you there. Look on the positive side, I'm not sending you there without a gift. Then for the first time the narrator had a smile. What type of gift? There will be a lot of powerful enemies you will have to fight. You still have your chakra and your other techniques. You will also have the Rinnegan, Sharingan, and the Byakugan. I will give you the knowledge on how to use them. Although, it would be hard for you to learn them. Naruto had stars in his eyes. Are you serious? That's so cool. I'm going to be powerful. True, but the only drawback is that you can't swim. Naruto fell off the log. There will be these fruits called the devil fruits. You get powers if you eat it, but do not eat one or it will kill you. Devil fruit users can't swim at all. The sink is like a rock. You're going to be one of them. So be careful Naruto. Before Naruto could say or ask any more. Everything went black. She smiled at him. The ninja world lives in you. Naruto woke up coughing. He saw a giant of a man standing over him. That's when he noticed that the guy looked somewhat like Kisum Hashigaki. He had pink skin and long black hair. He had a white and black striped shirt. He also had a dark brown captain's coat over his shoulders. The fishman had a long beard as well. I see you're awake. Who or what are you? Questioned the fishman. Naruto noticed that he was wet. Like he has been in the water. Then he noticed that he was on a ship and there were a lot of fishmen glaring at him. I won't ask again, boy. Said the same fishman. Then Naruto remembered talking to that Shinigami. She lied to me. I don't have any knowledge of Rinnegan or the others. Then he looked at the big fishman. What do you mean what am I? The fishman raised an eyebrow at him. What's your name? Uzumaki Naruto. I'm Fisher Tiger. Everyone leaves us, but Jin. Ordered Tiger. All the fishmen left the deck and went inside the ship. We were on our way to the red line when a black hole opened up in the sky. I never have seen anything like that, even in the grand line. Explained the captain of the sun pirates. Naruto raised an eyebrow. What makes you think I know anything about it? You fell out of the black hole. Stated Tiger. Naruto widens his eyes at that information. When you fell in the water. We noticed that you sank like a rock. 
In other words you ate a devil fruit. Said the first mate Jin. I jumped in the water to save you. Stated Tiger. Naruto nodded at them. You have my thanks, but I really don't know much about that black hole you saw. Even if I tell you what I know, I doubt you believe me. Let me decide that boy. Said Tiger. That's when Naruto remembered what the Shinigami said to trust the fishman he saw. He guessed that the fishman was a tiger. Then he started to tell them everything. Then that Shinigami sent me here. Said Naruto, as he finished telling his story. Jin glanced over at his captain. Is he telling the truth? Tiger nodded his head. I hate to say it, but the boy is telling the truth. That was too easy. How do you know I'm telling the truth? Questioned Naruto. Tiger had the ability to read people. He can tell if you're telling the truth or not. Explained Jin. Naruto nodded. Then Tiger gave him a serious look. You were telling the truth, but you could be crazy. An ninja world. Chakra. I want to see one of those eyes that the Shinigami was supposed to give you. I don't know how they work. Said a serious Naruto. Tiger gave him a glare. Then we will fight. Naruto fell over in surprise. What? Fighting for your life always unlocks new powers. I hate humans. So it's a win for me even if you die or not. Explained Tiger. Naruto glared at him. I get it. You want to see how strong I am, but I can't fight you. I owe you a debt for saving my life. Yin gave him a small smile. That boy has honor. It's hard these days to find a human with honor. Are you sure about that boy? Questioned Tiger. Naruto gave him a grin. I never go back on my word. Believe it. Tiger grinned at him. For a human you're not half bad. All the other fishermen came up on the deck when they heard the tiger was going to fight the kid and they were surprised the tiger complimented a human. He never did that. Have it your way boy. If you won't fight me then you can fight Jin then. Offered Tiger. Jin nodded. Prepare yourself. Naruto nodded and got in his fighting stance. Inbei punched the air four times. Naruto thought it was warm-up punches, but he felt pain in his stomach and was sent flying back. Jin charged at him and to everyone's surprise Naruto jumped high in the air. Then Naruto's eyes rolled back as he came crashing down on the deck. Inbei is a master of fishman karate. The first punch Naruto felt was a low level. The last three punches were delayed. Though Tiger was not impressed so far. Jin was waiting for Naruto to get up. Is this it? I thought you were strong. Naruto got up. I'm not done yet. Then there were about 15 shadow clones. Jin raised an eyebrow. This is impressive. Is this the ninja power you were talking about? Naruto nodded. Then they charged at Jin, but the fishman sent a shock wave at them, taking out most of them, but two. One of them tried to punch Jin in the face, but he blocked it and punched the clone in the face. Jin looked at the last Naruto. Looks like you're the only one left. Bring it on. Yelled Naruto. Jin appeared in front of him and brought his fist down on his head. Then to Jin's surprise Naruto turned into a cloud of smoke. The real Naruto appeared out of nowhere and slammed a Rasengan in Jin's chest that sent him flying through the door on the ship's deck. Arlong glared at Naruto. What is that kid? No sticking human can do that to a fishman. Naruto was a little surprised that Jin walked back out. I didn't hit him with a full Rasengan, but still he shouldn't have gotten up from that. This guy is strong. You caught me off guard. It won't happen again. Promised Jin. You're very strong and fast for your size. I guess it's time for sage mode. Stated Naruto with a smile. Unknown to everyone else, Naruto had three clones on the back of the ship to gather natural energy. The first clone disappeared, making Naruto a sage. Jin and Tiger widened their eyes. Is this one of the eye powers? Questioned Jin as he saw yellow rings around the kid's eyes. No, it's not. This is my most powerful form. Stated Naruto. Then Naruto appeared in front of him. Jin saw him. Both of them first connected to each other that sent shock waves through the air and blew all the fishmen off the boat, but Tiger. Naruto widens his eyes. This guy is able to keep up with me in sage mode. That punch hurt my fist. It's my job to make him awaken those powers of his. Thought Jin. You are strong Naruto-san. I have been holding back. Naruto had a surprised look on his face. I could tell you held back on that last attack. I have an idea. I will do one last attack and I want you to take it head on. If you fail you will die. Said Jin. Naruto shrugged his shoulders. We have gone this far. Let's go all the way. Jin nodded his head. I'm a lot more powerful in the water. Then he jumped in the ocean. Naruto made the giant sage Rasengan. Let's do this Jin. Tiger let out a sigh. Those two are going to destroy my ship. Meanwhile, underwater Jin was gathering water and then he shot it out straight at Naruto. Naruto met it head on and slammed his Rasengan in it. Naruto widened his eyes as he was being pushed back and was close to the edge of the ship. If he didn't do something soon, he was going to fall in the water. I can't die here. I was sent here to help the world and that's what I'm going to do. Then Naruto knew how to call upon his new powers and he activated the Rinnegan. 
Shinra Tensei. The water like cannon was destroyed like it was nothing. Gin's head was out of the water. That was amazing Naruto-san. Higer started to clap his hands. I had never seen such scary eyes before. I guess those are the eyes you were talking about. Naruto nodded. Please Tiger. Tell me everything about this world. Higer nodded and began to explain everything to him. Naruto cited all the information he was told by Tiger. Pain talked about bringing peace to the world. It would seem that the opposite happens. Higer was stung in front of Naruto. How come you weren't scared of us? All humans judge us by what we are. How come you didn't? Naruto smiled at him thinking about Gara. Nothing can really surprise me anymore. It's all good. I'm in your debt for telling me about how this world works. Higer nodded. I can't believe the words that are coming out of my mouth, but I like you, Naruto. Naruto started to laugh. Shishishi. Then he was wondering why he laughed like that. He never did that before. I will take you wherever you wish to go. Said Tiger. Thanks for giving me the rest. Said Naruto. Higer nodded. You're welcome. May I ask what you plan to do? Gin was nearby and listening. That simple. I'm going to destroy the world government. Stated Naruto with a serious look on his face. Jin was shocked that he said that. Tiger however just smiled at him. The world government has too many allies. Stated Tiger. I'm not afraid of them. I think the Akatsuki created the world government. Stated Naruto. Gin raised an eyebrow at this. You said altogether there were 10 members right? Yes. As I said before, the world government was created by 20 kings. So how could this Akatsuki create them? Tiger asked. Naruto shrugged his shoulders. I'm not sure. I'm just saying they could have teamed up with other people. Who knows? We will take you to an island or a city if you desire, but we are making a pit stop first. Said Tiger. Naruto raised an eyebrow at that. We are going to the red line, and I'm going to climb it to the top. I'm going to attack Mariajwa to free my brothers. Stated Tiger. Jin nodded his head. Are you sure you don't need help? Tiger nodded. In case I don't make it. I want you to take care of our brother Jin. It shouldn't be too much of a problem. The strongest marines are at Gold Roger's hometown. It was yesterday that he was executed. So now would be the perfect time to attack. Explained Jin. Naruto looked at them. Is it okay if I come with you Tiger? Tiger looked confused. If you help me, kid. There is no going back. The world government will stop at nothing to kill you. Naruto just grinned at that. I owe you two a debt for saving my life and telling you how the world works. Also I don't believe in slaves. I want to free them and see these world nobles myself. Maybe one of them might resemble one of the Akatsuki members. Hagra nodded. Who am I to stand in your way kid? You can be my backup. Naruto smiled at that. No problem. Go and tell the cook on our ship to make you something. I'm sure you're hungry. Said Tiger. Naruto nodded and ran off hoping that the cook knew how to make ramen. Jin looked over at the tiger. You really hate humans. Why do you like him so much? Tiger laughed a little. I'm not really sure, but that kid will change the world. Jin was shocked the tiger said that. He was not the type to believe in humans. The sunny pirates made it to the red line. Tiger told his crew when they saw other fishermen to help them. Tiger glanced at Naruto. Are you ready kid? Naruto grinned at that. Of course. They both started to climb the red line to get to the marriage wa. Finally they got to the top of the red line. It was at night. It took them all day to climb it. Tiger gave Naruto a serious look. Do you think you can survive on your own? No problem. This is where we go different directions. Stated Naruto. Tiger had a little smile. Funny, I was about to say the same thing to you. Well, I could tell that your crew didn't like me much, shishishishi. Said a laughing Naruto. Tiger nodded. You have Jin and I as allies if you ever need anything from us. Take care of yourself Tiger and thanks again. Said Naruto. You too. Said Tiger. But that they went different directions into the night. Naruto was sneaking around the place and discovered that there were more slaves here than ninjas in the leaf village. Naruto broke into a building and saw a man with a very long beard. He had what looked like a fishbowl on his head. He also had a weird looking suit on. I guess this guy is a world noble. That guy is seriously ugly. Could he be a descendant of one of the Akatsuki members? Thought Naruto. Then he saw the world noble walk over to a cage. In that cage was a girl about his age. She had long black hair. He thought she was hot. Who would do that to a woman? The man opened the door, grabbed the girl by her hair, and pulled her out hard. She screamed in pain. Listen to me, slave. Your job is to pleasure me, and then I'm going to kill you. After all, I would be laughed at by my older brother if he found out he had sex with a slave. Said the laughing world noble. The girl looked terrified that she was about to be raped and killed. That's when Naruto jumped down and pushed the world noble down. Naruto glared at him with his rinnegan. You're one sick freak. How dare you dare do this to me? Do you have any idea of who I am? 
Naruto grinned at that. Sure I do. You're a piece of shit. The slaves and the girl were shocked to the core that someone would say that to a world noble. Naruto then raised an eyebrow. Have you ever heard of the Akatsuki before? Like I know what a dead commoner is talking about. Said the man. You're going to die for what you were trying to do to her. Stated Naruto. The world noble laughed at that. You don't have the. He was cut off as Naruto appeared in front of him and hit him in the chest with a Rasengan. Which caused the world noble to fly through the wall and land outside. Then Naruto freed all the slaves in the building. Then they all walked out of the hole Naruto made. They saw the land on fire. I guess Tiger did that. Thought Naruto as he looked around. Then he saw another world noble and a marine standing over the dead world noble that he had killed. How dare you kill my brother? We created the world. You will pay for this. Shouted the world noble as he pointed a cane at him. Please wait for Roswald Sama. This boy is not normal. Allow me to take care of him. Said the marine. Roswald looked over at him. What about that fishman? Sakazuki-san is fighting him right now. Allow me to handle this boy. Said the marine. Fine. You better kill him. Ordered Roswald. Naruto was face to face with the marine. What's your name? The marine pointed to himself. Me? I'm a vice admiral. My name is Borsalino. What's your name? Uzumaki Naruto is my name and don't forget my name. Borsalino had a weird look on his face. Are you part of Tiger's crew? No, but I guess you can call me a pirate. It really doesn't matter what you are. I can't allow you to live. Said Borsalino. The girl that was a slave spoke up. Please don't die. Naruto turned and looked at her. Don't worry. I'm not going to die. Believe it. The girl was surprised by his words. Naruto glanced at the other slaves. You're free now. Run away and never get caught again. Then all the slaves started to run away. The girl didn't want to leave Naruto, but her sister grabbed her and told her to run. With that they all ran away. Naruto then charged at Borsalino and went to punch him in the face, but his fist went right through him. It was like the guy was made out of light. It's like that time I attacked that guy with a mask. Thought a shocked Naruto. Borsalino could tell he was confused. I'm a loja user. I have the power of the Pika Pika no Mi fruit. Meaning I'm a light man. Naruto then understood what he had to do. Thanks to his Rinnegan he could go into safe mode without a problem. I must say you have some weird eyes. First your eyes have rings in them and now they're yellow. Said a surprised Borsalino. Although it didn't look like he was that surprised. I heard from Tiger about Loja powers. If you don't know their weakness then you have to use hockey, but I have no clue what hockey really is. My eyes are telling me that you have to use a different energy to get around the power of Loja users. Explained Naruto as he disappeared. Borsalino raised an eyebrow. Then Naruto appeared in front of him and hit him in the face. Which sent him crashing through a building. Roswald widens his eyes. He didn't see that kid move at all. Naruto dodged just in time as a beam of light went by him. Borsalino walked out of the destroyed building. Half of his face was bloody. That attack was supposed to catch you off guard and pierce through your back. Naruto didn't say anything to him. Roswald Sama. Please go to the castle of Marriage Wa. It's too dangerous for you to be near this fight. I guess this marine is about to fight seriously now. Thought Naruto. I was surprised that you found another way to hit me without using hockey. What is that power? Questioned Borsalino. Naruto grinned at him. This is sage power. Borsalino raised an eyebrow. I never heard of such a thing before. Naruto remembered something. That Shinigami told him as he blacked out. Flash back, the ninja world lives in you, Naruto. She said just as he passed out. End of flashback, Naruto grinned at the marine. I'm going to test my powers out on you. Then he started to do hand signs. Great fireball technique. Then the giant fireball came from Naruto's mouth and he was heading to Borsalino. The marine didn't know if it had that sage power or not, so he kicked at the fireball with one of his light attacks. That caused a big explosion. Naruto smirked at that. I never could do fire attacks like that. I guess it's thanks to the Rinnegan that I can do that. You are very dangerous. I thought about capturing you, but it looks like you two are scary. Stated Borsalino. Then Borsalino started to let out a lot of kicks that sent beams of light at Naruto. He was fast enough to dodge them. Borsalino thought that he had to trap him to win. Then he started to gather light in his hands and sent a beam of light in the sky. Thanks to Naruto's Rinnegan he didn't blind him. Borsalino was up in midair. Yasukani no Magatama. And started to shout out little energy beams at Naruto. To his surprise Naruto held his hand up and made the beam of lights go in other directions. That guy is making me destroy half of this place. How did he do that? He thought as he landed on his feet. Naruto smiled. It was time to summon Gamabunta. He knew he would be mad at him, but Naruto wanted answers to what happened in his time. Borsalino saw Naruto during those weird moves with his hands. Summoning Jutsu. 
yelled Naruto as he slammed his hand down on the ground. Summoning Jutsu. Naruto yelled as he slammed his hand on the ground. To his surprise a little cloud of smoke appeared above him. Then he widened his eyes as the sword came flying down at him. He dodged and the sword fell in between his legs. He turned white as a ghost. Naruto fell over in surprise. Orsolino raised an eyebrow at him. That guy just made a sword appear out of nowhere. What is he? Naruto got up and glared at the marine. What the hell was that? What do you mean by that? Questioned Borsalino. That kid was getting confusing by the second. What's going on? Why didn't Gamabunta come? Instead a sword came out. Naruto thought. As he looked at the sword. He recognized it. He was really shocked that it was Orochimaru's Kusanagi sword. Then he looked over at the vice admiral. Do you know anyone by the name Orochimaru? Borsalino started to rub his chin. Can't say I have. So it wasn't really that marine. Then how in the hell did I summon Orochimaru's sword then? Though a very confused Naruto. Then out of nowhere. Borsalino appeared beside him and kicked him with a light kick on the side that sent Naruto flying into another building. Then there was a big explosion. I used too much power. I didn't mean to blow up that building. Said Borsalino. Maybe you should have used more power. Borsalino turned around and saw that Naruto was alive. He was bleeding on his forehead and his shirt was torn up. You're very scary. Now both of us have blood. You shouldn't underestimate me. And you shouldn't drop your guard like that. What's your name again? Questioned the vice admiral. Uzumaki Naruto. I won't forget that name. That's if you leave this island alive. Stated the vice admiral as he made a sword of light. Naruto had the Kusanagi sword. Then they both charged at each other and their swords clashed. After about five minutes of dueling with swords. They both jumped back from each other breathing hard. Then a giant fist made of magma came flying at him. Naruto dodged it just in time. Then someone appeared by Borsalino. Sakazuki. Did you get the other one? Questioned Borsalino. Sakazuki glanced at him. No. He got away with all the fishmen's slaves, and a lot of other slaves got away thanks to Tiger and this kid. Borsalino saw that Sakazuki was wounded. Seems Tiger gave you a hard time. That's why I was waiting for you to back me up, but you never showed up. This kid can't be that strong. Stated Sakazuki glaring at Borsalino. But that kid is a monster. He is scary. Complained to the vice admiral. Then we will kill him together. Yelled Sakazuki. Naruto was breathing hard. My sage chakra is almost out. Not to mention all this weird stuff going on with my abilities. I guess my best bet is to use that dot. Then to the surprise of both the vice admirals. Naruto flew high above Mariajwa. Shinra Tensei. But that there was a big explosion that shook the land of Mariajwa. Naruto landed on the ground and saw he had half the land destroyed just like pain did to the leaf village. He looked over and saw that he did some major damage to the castle too. Then he ran and jumped off the cliff and fell down the red line. Seven days later. Naruto was walking on the water to Chakra. He was being very careful not to fall in the water. He didn't see the sunny pirate since he and Tiger attacked Mariajwa. Naruto had no clue where he was going or what to do now. Then he heard people yell at him. He looked towards the east and saw a ship that had a pirate flag on it. He guessed that they were pirates. They were shocked that Naruto was walking on the water. Step aside guys. Ordered the captain. Naruto looked at the man. He was a very tall man. He had long hair that was slicked back. He also had a dark black and gray fur coat over his shoulders. He had rings on his fingers. How in the world can you walk on water? Questioned the captain. Naruto sighed at that. I can't talk right now. I have been walking for who knows how long. Trying to find an island so I can get new clothes, food, and rest. Sorry about that. My manners are bad ku ha ha ha. Laughed the captain. Naruto was already starting to like him as he laughed along with him. The pirates wet drop at their captain and Naruto because they were both laughing and smiling at each other. I like you. My name is Sir Crocodile, but you can call me Crocodile. He said. I'm Uzumaki Naruto. He said as he jumped on board the ship. I got off that stuff you're looking for on this ship. Said a smiling crocodile. At the same time in Marineford. Admiral Sengoku sighed at all the things that happened this month. Gold Roger turned himself in. Not to mention Shiki had attacked them. He had killed the fleet Admiral Kong. The Gorosei still haven't picked a replacement. Then Roger started the Pirate Age a couple days ago. Then not even a day later thousands of new pirates started to come out of the shadows. Then Fisher Tiger and a kid named Uzumaki Naruto attacked Mariajwa. No one had ever done that ever. Tiger burned some of the land and freed all the fishmen's slaves. What worried him the most was Naruto. That kid killed a world noble and had an unknown power that he had never seen before. He destroyed almost all the land. Lucky the vice admirals that saw him lived through Naruto's power. Lucky the Gorosei were at Roger's execution. They had ordered him to do two things. 
one was to kill Uzumaki Naruto and Fisher Tiger. The other one was to send CP9 and if need be a buster call to O'Hara. He was going to do that mission first and do a little bit of lying to all the pirates out there. Then he grabbed a Dan Den Mushi that was on his desk. This is Vice Admiral John Giant. I have an important mission for you. Stated Sengoku. Two months later. Naruto and Crocodile became Nakama. They were at Water 7. They were in a bar waiting for their ship to be repaired. Both Naruto and Crocodile were drinking rum. I really wish you will become my first mate Naruto. Said Crocodile. I like what I told you before. I'm here to save the world. Said Naruto. Crocodile rolled his eyes at that. Then let me ask you something about Naruto. Do you really think you can go up against the world? Maybe, but I can't right now. Answered a sad Naruto. Naruto told Crocodile everything about him about a month ago. Listen to Naruto. You shouldn't tell other people that you're from another world. Stated Crocodile. Naruto nodded. The hell with it. If you ever need help or when the day comes that you want to take them down. I will help you. Said Crocodile with a big smile. Shishishishi. Thanks man. If you ever need my help just ask. Crocodile started to smoke his cigar. You are strong. Who is the strongest you ever fought with a crocodile? Naruto asked. Crocodile narrowed his eyes at that question. That damn freak, Emporio Ivankov. Naruto raised an eyebrow. Who's that? The freak. That's all you need to know. Was all he said. Then one of Crocodile's crewmen ran into the bar. Captain. Crocodile looked over at him. What is it? I got amazing news. There is this big rumor going around that the pirate king left his ship the Orojaxon in Parsha. Crocodile widens his eyes. Are you for real? Of course, Captain. I hear it with my own ears. Is the ship ready? Yes, sir. Crocodile had a grin on his face. Then get ready to set sail. We are leaving for Parsha. The crewmember nodded his head and left the bar. Naruto raised an eyebrow. What's so special about a ship? Crocodile rolled his eyes at him. That ship was the only ship to sail around the world. I'm going to get that ship. Well, good luck with that shishishishi. Laughed Naruto. What are you laughing at? You're coming with me. Stated a smirking crocodile. What? I'm not fighting for a stupid ship. Said Naruto as he crossed his arms. We are Nakama. We always agree to have each other's back. Are you going to break your promise to me? I thought you would never go back on your word. Questioned Crocodile. Naruto eyed him. Besides, if I get in a fight. It's your fight too. I have Raymon. Said Crocodile with a smile. You're a jerk. I just want you to know that. Stated Naruto as he stood up from his chair. Ahahaha. <laughs> you need to learn to go with the flow of Naruto. Said a laughing crocodile. A few days later. The crew arrived at Parsha. Crocodile was looking at the island through some binoculars. Naruto was sitting in a chair nearby. What's so great about this island that the pirate king would leave his ship here? Questioned aboard Naruto. This island holds the dead end race. It's a pirate race. Whoever wins gets the grand prize answered Crocodile. So this time it's going to be a Pirate King's ship? Naruto asked. The race is held every two years. The funny thing is it happened a year ago. Stated Crocodile. Naruto sighed at that. Maybe we should just leave. I have a bad feeling about this. As do I, but I rather have the ship. Unless you want the world government to have it. Said a smiling Crocodile. Naruto laughed at that. Shishishishi. You sure know how to get me moving. Crocodile smirked at that and looked at his other crew members. Let's go to the island men. Meanwhile close by. There was the first ever underwater ship. The captain was stabbed in his chair in the middle of the room. He was very bored. Well. Have you gathered any information yet? I'm getting bored over here. The woman bowed to him. Forgive us Doflamingo Sama. There are some low level pirates on the island and some marines. Even Whitebeard is here with his crew sir. Doflamingo looked disappointed. Why does everything seem boring? Doflamingo Sama. I can tell you right now that Roger didn't leave his ship here. The marines lied. For what purpose? Who cares? Maybe they are looking to kill off a lot of pirates. After all, it is a trap. Then we have Whitebeard. He is here to try to get Roger's ship. In other words, how boring. He complained. Then a man came into the room. We have some crazy news about Doflamingo Sama. The rookie crocodile is here with his crew sir. Doflamingo smirked at that. Really? Yes sir. That's big news, but not enough to keep me happy. Please wait. You won't believe who Crocodile has with him. It's Demon Eyes Uzumaki Naruto. That was all he took to get Doflamingo happy. Finally. Things are going to get fun. Crocodile's crew were on the island by the water. Naruto raised an eyebrow. Have you ever been here before? Crocodile shook his head no. I heard a lot about it. Where should we start? Don't ask me. You're the one that forced me to come. Complain to Naruto. Don't blame me. You're the one that likes that noodle crap. Stated Crocodile. You have no sense of taste Crocodile. 
Rayman is the best. Yelled Naruto. I told you cigars are the best. Then they both got into each other's faces and yelled at the same time. You want to fight. The other sweat drop at that. I don't have time for this. We need to think of a plan. Said Crocodile. Fu 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 fu. How's it going Sir Crocodile and Demon Eyes Uzumaki Naruto. Said a voice behind them. Everyone looked behind them and saw a man in a feather coat sitting on a rock nearby and had a pair of sunglasses on. Naruto glared at the man. What did you just call me? Wait, forget that, who the hell are you? Crocodile glared at the man himself. Careful Naruto. This man is powerful. His name is Don Quixote Da Flamingo. It's an honor to meet you too. Especially Naruto Kundot said Da Flamingo. What are you doing here? Looking for Roger's ship. Questioned Crocodile. Fu 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 fu. I say the three of us should team up. What do you think of that? Questioned a laughing Da Flamingo. Crocodile rolled his eyes at him. Don't you have a crew? I have lots of men. Only the strong ones have a right to be here. Answered Da Flamingo. Naruto raised an eyebrow at him. What do you mean by that? Our luck is against us, Naruto Kunfufufufu. The Marines and Whitebeard Pirates are also here. So in order for one of us to get Roger's ship we need to team up. We can fight to death over it later. Explained Da Flamingo. He knew the truth and didn't tell them that Roger's ship wasn't here. He only came to meet with Naruto and get on his good side. Crocodile was about to refuse until Naruto spoke up. Maybe his right Crocodile. I fought with a Vice Admiral before. They are strong. Said Naruto. Crocodile didn't like it, but he had no choice right now. Whitebeard is strong as well. Fine, we are a team for right now. Da Flamingo smirked at that. I already checked out the island and discovered that there are low-level pirates inside of the mountain. They have no idea that Whitebeard or the Marines are here. Those three ways to get in. One of them is blocked by Marines. They have their commander with them there. Who's that? Questioned Crocodile. The Vice Admiral John Giant. The other has Whitebeard pirates and the last one has about 300 Marines. Stated Da Flamingo. Naruto looked over at Crocodile. Which way do you want to go? I guess we will fight the 300 Marines answered Crocodile. Crocodile's crew fell over in surprise. They all were thinking the same thing, those three were crazy. The marines were waiting for orders to attack the inside of the cave when they noticed three figures walking towards them. One of the marines recognized who the three were. Men. Get ready for battle. Show no mercy to those pirates. They are famous rookies. On the left was Naruto, the middle was Crocodile, and on the right was Da Flamingo. Out of the way weaklings. Ordered Crocodile. Our job is to protect the world from scum like you. All three of them said at the same time. Just who are you calling scum? Marines got their guns and swords ready to fight them. Fu 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 fu. Looks like they are not listening to you, Crocodile. Said a grinning Da Flamingo. Then I guess we will kill them. Stated Crocodile. Naruto nodded. I take the left, you take the middle, and our friend over there can take the right. Da Flamingo smiled when Naruto called him a friend. Crocodile glanced at Naruto. Are you telling me what to do Naruto? You're the one who dragged me here. If anyone has the right to tell you what to do, it's me. Although if you do get married then it's your wife that's going to boss you around shishishishi. Said a laughing Naruto. Naruto is one of a kind. Thought a smiling crocodile. Hurry and attack the pirates. Yelled one of the marines. The marines couldn't even touch Naruto as he dodged their attacks and fought back with powerful blows. A lot of the marines stabbed crocodile's body with swords but to their surprise he was nothing but sand. Crocodile looked bored. What are you guys doing? Barchin. Marines fell over dead. Da Flamingo smirked as he watched Naruto fight. I'm loving this. The big marine charged at him with a big axe. Die Da Flamingo. Da Flamingo had a sick smile on his face as he moved his fingers. I'm trying to watch the Naruto kun fight. Go play with the others. Then the marine started to attack the other marines. They demanded to know why he was doing it and the marine just screamed in pain. He said he couldn't control himself. Ten minutes later Crocodile's crew were shocked that three guys just took out 300 marines. Crocodile lit his cigar. Well, I was hoping they put up a fight. Da Flamingo started to laugh. Fu 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 fu. It was still fun. Crocodile raised an eyebrow. What is he after? He was watching Naruto fight more than he was my fight or even his own fight. He's up to something. Naruto walked to the entrance to the cave. Let's go. But that the others followed after him. When they walked in. There were a lot of levels. There were a lot of pirates sitting around drinking rum. This place is awesome. It's like a secret pirate place or something like that. Stated Naruto as he was looking around. That's because it is. Stated Da Flamingo. Naruto nodded and then looked at Crocodile. Well, where would you hide a ship in this place? Crocodile shrugged his shoulders. Then Da Flamingo started to walk in the middle of the place where everyone could see him. Fu 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 where is the pirate king's ship? Everyone looked at Da Flamingo like he was crazy. 
Naruto sighed at all that. That's one way to get people to notice you. Before any of the pirates spoke up there was a big explosion. It left a giant hole in the wall. Everyone saw Vice Admiral John Giant with a lot of marines. At the same time another explosion was heard on the opposite side where the marines were at. Everyone was shocked to the core when they saw Whitebeard and his crew there. John was shocked that Whitebeard was here. Well, what do we have here? Some marines. Said Whitebeard. John looked over at the three rookies. You are under arrest for the sake of justice. We won't allow you to get the Pirate King's ship. Whitebeard smirked at that. I think that ship is ours. What do you think, Tatch? I think you're right, Pops. Answered Thatch. Hold on. That ship belongs to me. Yelled Crocodile. What makes you think that brat? Questioned Whitebeard. Crocodile smirked at him. I'm going to defeat you, Whitebeard. Urara. You're a funny brat. Said a laughing Whitebeard. Crocodile glared at him. Then Marco appeared beside Whitebeard. Pops, it would seem that his ship isn't anywhere to be found. Whitebeard glanced at him. Are you sure? Trust me. That's not a ship I can forget. Marco. Whitebeard then had a big grin on his face. I thought as much. Why would the marines lie about Roger's ship being here? I only came here to know why. The kill rookie pirates, but to be honest I'm after you demon eyes Uzumaki Naruto. Answered John. Who's that? Thought a confused Whitebeard. Naruto raised an eyebrow. Hold on guys. Why is everyone calling me demon eyes? Crocodile remembered that the flamingo called Naruto when they met on the beach. Fufufufufu. You really don't know Naruto-kun. You have a bounty. When you get one, you have a nickname. Explained a laughing Da Flamingo. John glared at Da Flamingo. How did you know that? Da Flamingo smirked. I have my ways fufufufu. Whitebeard widens his eyes. You're a famous rookie. Are you in the Fisher Tiger's crew? No, I'm not. Answered Naruto. Crocodile glanced at him. What the hell did you do with Fisher Tiger? I heard he hates humans. John glared at Naruto. He did something not even Whitebeard or the Gold Roger has done. He attacked Mariajwa with Tiger. He helped free a lot of slaves. Whitebeard raised an eyebrow. How did that brat get to Mariajwa? Crocodile and his crew were shocked to hear that. The other pirates around were shocked to hear that too. Naruto grinned at that. You sound like it's a bad thing, Marine. You guys had thousands of slaves there and it makes me sick to my stomach. Don't you dare lecture me on what's right and wrong. You killed a world noble. Yelled John. Crocodile cigar fell out of his mouth. Whitebeard had a smile on his face, and so did Da Flamingo. Everyone else was shocked that Naruto killed a world noble. Not only did you do that, but you destroyed half of Mariajwa. We don't even know what type of power you use. We put a 500 million bounty on your head. Stated John. Whitebeard smirked at that. That brat broke all the records. That's the highest bounty that anyone ever got on their first try. Naruto had a questioning look on his face and looked over a crocodile. Is that big? That's big Naruto. You're the first person to get their bounty so high like that for your first try. Said a shocked crocodile. Naruto shrugged his shoulders. Whatever. I guess it's like being in the bingo book. He thought. That is why we marines must kill you demon eyes. Yelled John as he drew his sword. Target found. Said a voice above them. They looked up on one of the balconies and saw a big man. Naruto sweat drops. Why is everyone so big and tall? Fufufufufu. If it isn't the tyrant Bartholomew Kuma. Said a laughing Da Flamingo. Tyrant? Questioned Naruto. He's been known to crush anything in front of him and never to spare anyone's life. Explained a smirking Da Flamingo. I'm a little mad right now. I came for a new ship and that's what I'm going to do. I think I will take one of your ships, the Whitebeard. Stated Crocodile. Whitebeard smirked at that. Looks like we are going to fight some marines and brats. Crocodile ordered his men to get ready and fight the Whitebeard's crew. Then he glanced over at Naruto. You're going to help us. Naruto was looking at the Vice Admiral. It looks like he wants to kill me. I might have to fight. Naruto was cut off. Above you. Yelled Crocodile. Naruto looked up and saw Kuma flying towards him like a cannonball. He saw that Kuma had taken off his gloves and there was something on his hands. He then dodged as Kuma landed and on the ground was a big hole that looked like a paw print. Naruto noticed that he looked a lot taller up close. Why are you attacking me? Kuma stayed quiet. Looks like he wants to kill you, Naruto kun fufufufufu. Said a laughing Da Flamingo. Naruto glared at him. You're not helping much. You remind me of an enemy I know. Please tell me you don't have a power that can take over another person's body so that you can live forever. Da Flamingo looked amused. Living forever you say? Not my cup of tea Naruto-kun. Are you saying that was not Nakama? I really don't know you, you're very crazy and not to mention you're not really helping us. Stated Naruto as he eyed him. Then Kuma sent shock waves that look like paws at Naruto. Then Naruto started to dodge them. 
Don saw this as a moment to kill Naruto, and he tried to slash at Naruto, but his body just stopped. What's going on? Fufufufufu. I can't allow you to kill Naruto come from behind. He is fighting the tyrant after all, so he's a little busy. Said a laughing Da Flamingo. Don glared at him. Stay out of this. Da Flamingo smirked at that. Can't do that. Naruto kun is mine. Naruto looked over at him. He still didn't know if he could trust this guy or not. He reminded him too much of Orochimaru. Crocodile raised an eyebrow. It seems Da Flamingo is backing Naruto up. Then he looked at his men. Get ready. We are going to attack Whitebeard. But that crocodile and his crew charged at Whitebeard. Don then ordered the marines to go kill Da Flamingo first since he wouldn't step aside. Then the marines started to fight each other and the vice admiral had no choice but to fight Da Flamingo. That left a one-on-one -on -one fight for Naruto and Kuma. I don't like to fight without a reason. Why are you attacking me? Questioned a serious Naruto. Their question shall remain unanswered. Stated Kuma as he started to shoot out shock waves. Naruto widened his eyes as he got hit with them, but he turned into a cloud of smoke. Then Naruto came from behind him with a Rasengan. Lucky Kuma blocked it with his hand and it sent Naruto flying to the wall. When the dust cleared up. Kuma saw how dangerous that technique really was. There was a giant shoe in the wall and it looked like it kept going for about 10 feet. So he can shoot out shock waves and block any attack with his hands. Thought Naruto as he turned on his sage mode. Then Kuma appeared in front of Naruto and Naruto appeared behind him a second later. Then he punched Kuma in the back of the head and sent him flying into the wall. Kuma then got up from Naruto's punch and held his head. What is that power? Did you eat devil fruit? Like you said before. Your question shall remain unanswered. Kuma raised an eyebrow at that. Very well. I was sent to test your power. That caught Naruto's intention. Who? He will come and find you later. Kuma said on the subject. I guess you can call my power a devil fruit power. Said Naruto as he got ready to attack. Kuma then put his gloves on. Our fight has come to an end. Naruto raised an eyebrow. Oh really? Kuma just nodded his head. Before Naruto could say anything. He heard a scream and saw that crocodile was on the ground defeated. His left hand was missing and he had a cut going across his face. Even Crocodile's crew were all killed. Whitebeard looked like he was going to finish Crocodile off. Naruto summoned the Kusanagi sword and appeared in front of Whitebeard to block him. Then there was a big explosion. When the smoke cleared Naruto was standing over Crocodile. He was breathing really hard and his eyes were bleeding. There was a phantom-like thing above Naruto. Whitebeard and the others were shocked that Naruto's eyes had changed. They were red now. I have never seen anything like this before. That kid is not normal. The Kusanagi sword was strong enough to stand up to Whitebeard's, but Naruto saw a lot of power coming from that attack and then unlocked the Sharingan. What the hell is that? Questioned one of the Whitebeard pirates. Naruto glared at them all. It's called Susanoo. I won't let you kill my Namaka. Fufufufufu. Looks like the marines retreated and now you got me and Naruto come to deal with. Said a laughing Da Flamingo as he stood by Naruto. Whitebeard glanced over at Marco. Do you see a reason to keep on fighting? Sure, don't pop. Answered Marco. Very well. We are going to pull back. Hey Brad, how would you like to join my crew? Questioned a smiling Whitebeard. Marco was shocked that he even said that. Naruto's eyes were bleeding. Screw you. Da Flamingo smirked at Naruto's answer. Urara. If you ever change your mind, look me up. Said smiling Whitebeard as he left with his crew. Then Sasanu disappeared and Naruto started to cough up blood. He didn't know what was going on with his powers. First he couldn't summon toads, then he gets weak really fast and he sage punches should stop some of these guys, but they get up like it was nothing. He failed to save the leaf village from pain and he couldn't even help his only friend in this world defeat an old man. Then he fell on the ground and passed out. Da Flamingo started to laugh. Your power is amazing, Naruto-kun. You're a guy that I want to be friends with rather than having you as my enemy. Fufufufufu. Then he picked up Naruto and Crocodile. He noticed that all the pirates and Kuma have all disappeared. Then he carried them to his ship. Thanks for watching my video, see you next time, till then sayonara.